Uh, let's figure out how to do a short ish story. Uh, it's called The Curious Mark Bird and the Young Boy. There was a village, and on the edge of this village was a small house. And in this small house was a boy and his father. Now this boy, his favorite thing to do was to visit the nearby forest. And specifically, to visit it at night. Now, day and night he would go and he would learn all manners of beasts and talk to them. And they would listen. And this went on for many years. But his favorite thing to do happened at night. And he would go among the trees and all the birds of the forest would gather and they would sing in a grand chorus. Now, on a particular night, a particular evening, of a particular day, of a particular season, something strange happened. As the boy was walking among the trees, he noticed something, a bird singing almost out of tune. So strange, curious. So the bird, the boy, followed the bird's song. As he approached, there was a small tree, and on the small tree was a small branch, and on the small branch was a small limb. Perched was a curious marked bird with markings covering it completely. And as he approached, he listened intently. It wasn't out of tune. It was singing its own song, contrasting the grand chorus around it. The boy only had one thought. Why? Why would you sing your own song when there's this beautiful chorus going on around you? And as he stood under the tree, the bird took notice of him and flew down and perched on his shoulder, continuing its strange song. Now eventually all the other birds went back to their nests to go to sleep, but the curious mark bird stayed. And so he walked among the trees and listened until dawn was approaching. Eventually, the bird left for the day, and the boy went home. From that point on, the boy had one mission, to find the curious mark bird as many times as he could. Some days he'd find it, some nights he'd find it. Some days he wouldn't, some nights he wouldn't. This went on and on, until a particular afternoon of a particular day, the curious marked bird dropped something in front of him. It was glowing. He picked it up, a pebble, it was shimmering. He took it back home and went to the marketplace. He took it to three different appraisers, and they all said the same thing. They had never seen the like. It was priceless. They pleaded, they begged, they asked him where he had found this precious pebble. But he was tight-lipped, and he went back home. He thought to himself, I know what I'll do. And he scoured his house for all his precious stones, gems, and trinkets he had found over the years, and picked up in the forest, and put it in a giant sack. He took it to the curious mark bird, and dumped the whole load in front of it. Carrie Smart Bird was a little complex, a little scared, but intrigued nonetheless. Jumped, picked up a pebble, threw it to the left, picked up a stone, threw it to the left, picked up a trinket, threw it to the left, picked up a stone, threw it to the right, and this went on and on and on until a small pile laid in front of the boy. He scooped it up into his sack and went back home and took it to the same three appraisers in the marketplace. And they all said the same thing. The load went from priceless to somewhat valuable to everywhere in between. They begged, they pleaded, they asked the boy, where, where have you found this? But the boy, again, was tight-lipped. And he went back home with an idea. In his secret place, under his bed, he removed a piece of wood pulled out a box, his precious treasure, took out his special gem 
that he had found his most prized possession and took it to the curious smart bird and dropped it. The bird looked, picked it up, and flew away. Thus began an exchange. Sometimes the bird would give, sometimes it would take. Sometimes the boy would give, and sometimes he would take. This went on and on. But trouble began within the boy. Sometimes the boy would give, and it would peck at him and fly away for weeks at a time. And no matter where the boy looked, he couldn't find it until it wanted to be known. The boy began to think of a plan. What can I do? What can I do to make it go back to what it was? I know what I'll do. I'll become a bird. If I become a bird, I can finally figure out what went wrong. But how? I know what I'll do. I'll go to my father. So he went to his father and said, Dad, I want to become a bird. Why? The father asked. Because I want to, I want to be a bird. I want to, I want wings. I want to fly. Did I not give you hands so you could climb any mountain? Oh well, yeah, but wings, Dad? The father thought for only a moment, and only if you were paying attention. This is what you'll do. Go into my workshop and create two beautiful wings. Go to the highest mountain, the highest peak in the forest, and jump off and see if you could fly. The boy was a little skeptical, but nevertheless said, okay. I went to the workshop and created two beautiful wings. Climb the highest mountain in the forest, the highest peak. Looked down, it was falling, and jumped. True to the boy's credit, he glided for a time, and then spiraled out of control, crashing into the ground, into a small crater. The boy was dazed, confused, but yet not deterred, got up a second time, climbed the same mountain a second time, and climbed the same peak a second time. And this time, I know what I'll do, a running start. So he ran and jumped off. Again, true to the boy's credit, flew, or should I say, glided a little further, and then spiraled out of control, crashing into the ground, creating an even larger crater, shattering his wings. On his back, he looked up into the sky, wondering why. Now, all the animals of the forest were watching this, confused. This, this is a very abnormal behavior for the boy, for they knew him. Two animals crept up. And as the boy looked up from his crater, he saw a raccoon, and on top was a finch. In unison, they talked to him, but they said two completely different things. The raccoon asked, are you okay? The finch said, what's wrong with you? Your boy can't fly. I'm trying to become a bird. I'm trying to fly, but I don't know how. I can't. I don't know what else to do. The couple looked at him, perplexed, and then said, this is what you'll do, boy. Maybe you can't fly, but maybe you'll be able to look like a bird. And then left him. So, with his pride shattered, he went back to his father and asked, Dad, I want to be a bird. I want to fly. I want to, I want to look like a bird. Again, the father looked at him. Aren't you made in my image? Why would you want to be a bird? But, Dad, bird, feathers, beak, Again, the father looked at him and thought, for only a moment, and only if you were paying attention, this is what you'll do. You'll go in my workshop and craft the skies. Go. The boy was a little perplexed, but again, yet not deterred, went into the workshop. And he began to draw and change. But he learned something. Unfortunately for him, he was not, not an artist. 
He had no artistic ability. Try as he might, and he learned from looking at the curious smart bird of all of its patterns, it would take years to mimic and years to master. The boy was depressed and in a slump. He thought to himself so hard, what can I do? What is the simplest thing I can do to become more like a bird? I know what I'll do. I'll sing. Better yet, I'll whistle. If I can whistle, it'll start my journey to become a bird. So he went into the first and listened to all manner of songs and all manner of whistles the birds sang. One month went by and he tried to whistle. Nothing. Try as he might, the boy could not whistle. But again, he was not yet deterred. Three months went by, and on the morning of a particular day, he whistled. And it was the most ungodly sound the forest had ever heard. They pleaded, they begged, they asked the boy, please stop, you are not a bird. Your singing is terrible. You're whistling. I don't know what that is. Stop. But again, the boy was not deterred, and he went on. On a particular afternoon, his best friend, an owl, appeared beside him. What are you doing, boy? I'm trying to be a bird. I'm trying to fly. I'm trying to sing. I'm trying to whistle. Why? to become more like the curious smart bird. Who? Who? I, why? The boy thought to himself, I know why. Standing in front of me. I'm trying to become something I'm not, to solve something I can't, because I thought this would be better. What are you going to do now? The boy looked down and saw a pebble. He picked it up. He took out his carving knife and carved into it. Intricate symbols and designs. He took out his painting supplies and painted it. I know what I'll do. I'll take this back to the curious mark bird and see if this has any work. That is the end. The curious mark bird and the small boy. Thank you.